the last video, we pretty much created the setup stuff with React, TypeScript, and Webpack. Um, so let's go ahead and start actually creating this do list. Let's go into our text editor and um, let's get rid of the props since we don't actually need it. It's for demonstration purposes only. Um, get rid of the interface and let's open up our index.tsx and get rid of this name property. Okay, let's save that. Don't forget to add a space before your slash. You can't have it like that. You have to have a space beforehand. Um, save this and let's change this to React um, TypeScript to do list. Um, let's create a form. And let's give it an input of type text. And have a self closing tag for the input and give it the button of type submit. And we will call the button add task. Okay, so if you have multi line um, HTML in, in a JS file like this, you have to have a parent div to encapsulate everything. So I'll put that together. And I'm using a plugin called Prettier. So if I hit Control, Alt, and F, it should automatically format my code. Um, and it hasn't because I've made a mistake somewhere. I haven't closed the button properly. So let's do that. Cool. So as you can see, it's automatically created curly braces, I mean, brackets or parentheses here. And um, it's put everything into the correct order. So you've got the text here, um, sorry, the button and then the input. Let's add a placeholder so the user knows what to do. Add tasks. All right. So if I um, check my terminal and there's something called type or TP, which I've spelled incorrectly. Right. So if I check this, all that should be fine. And I can enter the browser and see that there's um, uh, input and a button here, so I can type test. Nothing happened because um, it refreshed the page, which is the typical behavior for a button and a form. So what we want to do is prevent it from refreshing once we ha add task. And um, to do that, we'll add a um, method to our form. Conventionally, um, we use the on submit, and we call it uh, handle submit. So conventionally, that's what we call um, functions that do such a thing. Um, in in this case, we're going to have a ES6 callback um, with a callback function with a fat arrow or um, an arrow function. And what this does is it sets the um, changes the context for our for our function. So you notice I've added a this here because I'm going to call the function over here uh, handle submit. And I believe I've spelled that incorrectly, so I'll change that over by copying and pasting this here. Okay, so typically this with, without the fat arrow function, it's using the context of the render here, but we want it to use the context of the class. So by putting it this way, we reset the context of the parent element that the renders inside, which is the class. Um, for more information about this, you can go to a, a tutorial that tells you about context and JavaScript, but this isn't the place for that. Um, so what I want to do now in the handle submit is to pass in um, the DOM event element. So let's put E here. And inside here we'll call E. Currently we'll call it any, but we'll change it for now. And then what we want E to do is to prevent the default behavior. Okay. So let's see if that if we get any errors from that. No errors. Awesome. So now if I go into the browser and type in something like test, it doesn't refresh. So you've prevented what normally happens um, in the form. So now what we want to do is say, if I add something here, I want it to show up here. I want this to refresh, um, be completely empty, not refresh, sorry. Empty up like this, and I want test to show up here. Um, so let's do that. Um, in order to do that, we'll basically need to tell React that whatever's inside here, we want you to store it and we want you to put it somewhere um, inside inside the, the file. And in order to do that, we'll create something called a state which will store whatever we've typed in. Um, to do that, we create a class constructor function. 
um, constructor, and then we will give it. Um, we'll pass it. Uh, we'll pass it as super. Super basically calls the parent. Um, what's this? What this extending? So this is going to go into the component from React, and it will give it our. It will give it props. Even though we don't have any, it's convention to give it props. Um, um, we'll give it props of because we don't have any props. They're empty, so we'll give it an empty, um, empty object, and let's create the states. So the re the reason we use super is so we can use this, and this basically, like I said before, goes into the React component. So let's create the state, and what we're going to put in the state is a uh, current task. So current task will be a string, um, and we'll have tasks as an array. Not object and array, sorry. So what current task will do is when the user types something in, it will store whatever they typed in in current task, and when the user hits add task, whatever's inside that current task will be a new array entry inside the tasks array. Um, so let's go ahead and put that together. Okay, so let's first of all, when the user types something in, tell them to put something in the state. In the state, sorry. So we'll call it an on change. And the on change will simply, sorry, will be this. We'll set the state. So let, let's first of all do another flat arrow function. Set the state. We don't push to the state like we push into an object array. We always use the set the set state method. Um, and what we're going to do is inside we'll have uh, an object in here. Inside the current task, the current task entry. We'll get e dot target dot value. So e is the um, is the event dumb event. So I've just reformatted the code. So it's got rid of the brackets, which is I guess better. So we've got e, and whenever the user types something in, it will go into the current task. What I like to do when I'm um, debugging code is also have a console log to see what the state currently is at all times. Um, okay. So when these when these type something in, it'll go into the current task. Now we want to have so now when we want to have the user click add task, it will go into the task section. So let's add that functionality to our handle submit. Okay, and as I mentioned before, when the user hits add task, I want what's inside the input already to disappear. So we're going to get what's in current task already and make it equal nothing. So it's an empty string. And what we're going to do to tasks is open up the array. And what we're going to use the ES6 spread operator to get everything that's already inside tasks. So this dot state dot tasks. So we'll get everything that's inside tasks already, which in this case is nothing. Open it up and we will add in this dot state dot current task. Basically, this is gonna keep the task clean. It won't it won't reset what's already in there. It will always add a new task and um, keep making the array longer that way. Alright, so let's check our terminal, see if everything is good. And um, so if you see an error that starts off with TS, it's usually a TypeScript error. So let's let's fix these errors. Let's go to line 18 and see what it's talking about. Okay, so what does it say? Task does not exist. Um, state spin spot correctly. Okay, so I think in order to fix that, we need to, if you look in our object here, this, this is what the state should be. And it's, there's nothing in there, there are empty objects, but clearly it's not empty, there's something in here. So let's create an interface, call it I state. Let's go to the bottom of our code and create the interface here. And in our um, state by default, we have a string, current task, and an array, which will be an array of strings, which is tasks. So let's create that in our interface. Okay, so 
So we have tasks. Um, how do you spell tasks again? With a K. Right. So tasks will have an array of strings. Current task is already a string. And if we uh, check our check our code, everything looks fine. It's all passed correctly. And let's go into our browser and see what happens when we type in test. Okay. Let's go into our console and see what's happening inside the state. So as you can see, when I typed in test, it, it um, saved every single keystroke and it put the test object into an array as we wanted, but it didn't clear everything. So let's see what we can do to change that. All right, in our code, um, currently it's, it's not saving the value. It's not getting the value from anywhere. Um, it's just making, it's just keeping what we typed in. So let's give it a value um, of what's already in the state. So this state current task, um, and that way, if we reset the state like we do over here, then it will re reset the value and everything will go back to normal. So, so it's a bit of a loop. Basically, whenever you type something into current task, it's getting the current task state and putting it back into it. So it's it's a bit weird, but it's the way we can get around this. Um, okay. So if I type test and to add task. It will be empty and it will store a task into our array. If I add something else into our um, to do list, we have two things in our array. And currently, this looks good, but it's not displaying it. Um, so, I'll explain how to display everything in a to do list in our next video. If you enjoyed this, if you found it useful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.